Welcome back to Detail Garage. I'm your host, Corey. Our project car, a 1996 Honda Civic DX, has gone through quite a restoration. It started off with an inspection, then we moved to headlight restoration. After that, we washed the vehicle, then we clayed the vehicle, and then we polished the vehicle. Now we're getting into the inside of the car, we're gonna do interior cleaning, come back outside, and we're gonna apply our glazes, our sealants, and our waxes, and then we're gonna get ready to prep this car for delivery. So stay tuned, and let's get started. Okay, so here we are, the interior of the car. As you may have seen, we do have some black light settling in on the exterior paint of the car, uh, and that's good because it's gonna do that while we're working inside. So we're in the interior of the car. This is my canvas for today. So in front of me, I have a whole bunch of different materials. I have, um, I have upholstery, I have carpet, I have plastic, I have vinyl, I have rubber. Uh, I have pretty much any kind of interior piece that you might have in your car, I also have right here. Also with me, I have a plethora of uh, interior cleaning tools. Actually, I have interior cleaning tools at nauseum surrounding me. Um, and I'm gonna show you, it's all about options because that's really what it comes home to is, you know, what is your level of clean on the interior of your car? For most people, they can just go in and vacuum their interior of their car and, and that's all they need to do. And if that's all you need to do, then great, that's easy. So let's talk about the vacuum first. So uh, next to me, I have a, a shop vac, any standard shop vac that you pick up anywhere. Um, we're just gonna vacuum the car out. So a few things about vacuuming your car. First, you wanna go ahead and try to remove some pet hair. If you have pet hair, human hair, um, tough lint, uh, anything of that nature that might not come up with vacuuming, we have with us our pet hair and lint brush. This is uh, a great little brush for just brushing up pet hair. It's really gonna help you remove pet hair, dust, pollen, lint, anything of that nature. Um, some vacuums, you know, they don't have the ability to pick up that hair as it's stuck to the fabric of the upholstery of your vehicle. So you just want to go ahead and brush your pet hair, your human hair, your dust, your lint, you know, off your seat or at least pick it up with the brush. It's also got this nice little blade here that you can scoop your stuff off and brush it and, and keep going. So you want to get this, uh, this statically stuck stuff off of your seats first. And then you want to go ahead and, and, and start your vacuuming. Uh, when it comes to vacuuming, Normal vacuums come with a bunch of different tools. You have your pointy end tool. You got your brush hair tool. You got your wide angle tool. So, ooh, excuse me, so you got your wide angle tool. So a couple things about these. Uh, each of them have a, a specific purpose. Uh, they each have a specific job. Uh, this obviously is for getting in tighter areas than this one. But a little tip I just wanted to present to you. Uh, if, if you're like me and you know, you're a little OCD and you really want to get into those tight spaces, uh, these these small pointy uh, extensions that you can put on the outside of your, um, I'm sorry, that you can put at the end of your, your vacuum hose can actually be made even uh, more finite. So you can take some painter's tape, um, some of your detailing tape you might have laying around, and if you just tape over this little section like that, it's gonna give you a fine point for suction. Um, it's really gonna help you get some nice, uh, some nice stuff out of hard to reach areas such as inside your door panels, uh, your handles and things of that nature. And I was, you know, I've used this a couple times like this and then I, I was thinking actually this morning, I was like, you know, how can I make that better? So I stopped over at 7-Eleven, picked up a straw and I just taped a straw to the end of it. So now I can really get in some tough spots. I mean, there might be vacuum extension pieces out there like this, but this didn't cost me anything. I was able to make it and I can get, you know, for areas such as like down in the screw in the handle of your, of your door, there's some dirt and grit down in here and, and normally even this is not small enough to get in there. So this is gonna give me the ability to do that. So again, just trying to give you a few tips and tricks um, to make vacuuming easier for you. Not everybody has their own vacuum, I understand, but you can make those modifications to a, a vacuum at a car wash and take them off and no one's really gonna be upset. So you're gonna, you know, that's one option for just simply vacuuming your car. And we'll get to vacuuming in a minute, but I wanna also talk about a couple other, couple other options that you have available to you. And again, it all depends on your definition of clean um, and, and how dirty the interior of your car is. Luckily, this project car is not that, you know, it's not that dirty. The owner took good care of the interior. Um, you know, there's some minor contamination on the rugs. I don't see any large stains, um, no blood, no uh, soda, you know, nothing of that nature. It's just mainly some dog hair, what it looks like, and some, you know, leaf bits and, and things of that nature. But, you know, if, if you really want to clean your car well, uh, we have a carpet extractor here with us. This is our, <coughs> excuse me, this is our 1600 series carpet extractor. Uh, this, uh, we got the water heated up and ready to go. So it's recommended that you 
upholstery cleaning your car seats once a year. That's going to help uh, remove buildup as, from human sweat, human oils, uh, human hair, dirt, dust, and contamination. That's going to continuously get beat down into your seats, and this is going to help remove it. The only problem with using a carpet extractor, obviously, is that it uses water. So this seat would then be be wet for up to about 24 hours, depending on the temperature in the area of the country that you live. So that's another option. Now, uh, if you're um, a man's man and you really want to bring out the big guns and you got some pretty good pretty good gruff built up in your car some pretty good stains um, maybe you killed a hooker I don't know but basically then you could go ahead and use uh, any rotary polishing device and, and attach one of our soft bristled upholstery and carpet brushes and you can really get in there and really dig out some uh, some heavy stains and contamination now if you don't have um, if you don't have a flex PE 14 rotary polisher we do make an adapter screw that goes right onto the back of this uh, and I think I actually have it here I do uh, this is what's known as the good screw and this is a rotary backing plate adapter for any corded or cordless drill so if you don't have a polishing device and you still need to clean or you want to use a rotary style cleaning device you can just simply attach the good screw to the back it's a few dollars and you can use your favorite corded or cordless uh, drill so that's an option as well. So lots of different options. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum this seat off. I'm going to use our carpet extractor with some nonsense to really clean it well uh, and down here as well. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with some fabric guard. I'm going to use some inner clean to clean the dashboards and the vinyl. Uh, and I mean, that's, you know, I say this all the time. It's really not that complicated. <laughs> But it's, it's what you want to do with your car, you know, how much pride you have in your ride, you know, what do you want to do, how clean does it have to be, uh, how long have you owned the car, how old is the car, are you the first owner um, or are you the second or the fifth, how many other people were before you and how clean you really want to get your car, as well as if you're trying to resell your car for a uh, profit. Uh, anything of that nature. So again, it's all on you. Um, but again, you want to start off with brushing off any contamination, then vacuuming, then we're going to do our carpet extraction. Uh, and then we're going to use some fabric guard to help reduce if any do spills do happen in the future um, to keep that moisture from going into the seats or the carpets. So that's it. And then we're going to get into cleaning everything else. I mean, we could be in here for days. Uh, we could be doing all kinds of different things from, you know, carpet extraction on the fabric on the door to, you know, wiping down and cleaning all the vinyl to getting in here and getting all the dust. Uh, I mean, I also have in front of me uh, the blaster sidekick. I mean, if you really want to get nuts, you can keep, you can go out this all day. Uh, this is great for getting into your little vents, uh, removing dust in hard to reach spots. I would recommend doing this before you vacuum because it's going to kick stuff up all over your car. But if you want to get in tough to reach areas where there's dog hair, human hair, dirt, uh, and you want to get that out of there before you get to vacuuming, it's pretty strong. Woo! Careful with that guy. So, it's all about options. It's all about your definition of clean. Um, but I told this guy that I was going to clean his car well, so that's why we're going to go ahead and go through the vacuum and then carpet extraction method. So let's uh, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to grab my vacuum here, and I'm going to use our medium head. Get some of this contamination. So I vacuumed off some of the major contamination on the seat. Um, I'm now going to go ahead and use my carpet extractor because again, this is a vacuum as well. It just now adds water to it, but we're going to mix it with our all-purpose cleaner nonsense. And I'm just going to go ahead and spray some on the seat and on the carpet. And now I'm going to go ahead and start with my carpet extraction. I saw Greg do this the other day on a really dirty carpet. It was amazing. So I'm kind of interested to see what's going to come up. Let's find out.
it already looks better. It, it smells better. It looks cleaner. Um, this wasn't that dirty, so we actually diluted the nonsense about one to three. Uh, you can use it on your desired you know, level of dilution depending on the job. If it's really dirty, you don't have to dilute it. If it's not that dirty, you can dilute it pretty significantly. It's a professional grade cleaner, so um, you know, use it as, as desired. So that's, uh, so we've, again, you just want to replicate this. I'm not going to do the whole car on camera. We would be here for weeks. Um, so that's how you do the seats and the carpet. Uh, you can get under the seats. You can take the seats out. You can, you know, really go crazy. Uh, you can get really uh, small Q-tips to get into the small intricate places. So that's uh, vacuuming and using a carpet extractor. So now we're going to get into actual interior cleaning on plastics and vinyl and rubber and all those different things. So also you can vacuum and do this. I mean, you can... It's really as far as you want to go. So the next step is we're going to grab our inner clean and uh, our yellow workhorse towel. Here at Chemical Guys, we color code our towels by uh, you know what job they're for. Our green ones are exterior workhorse towels. Our blue ones are for glass, and our yellow ones are for interior. That helps us you know not cross contaminate chemicals or dirt and contamination that would be on the outside of the car that wouldn't be on the inside of the car. So again, just uh, organizational procedures. So I'm going to spray some inner clean on a uh, yellow microfiber towel. And I'm gonna wipe it off. Wipe, wipe it in one, you know, a couple directions, and just clean. Um, it depends on the level of contamination. Depends on your surfaces. Depends on the job that you're doing. Uh, but you want to get into all the little cracks. You want to get all the little crevices. Remove the dirt, the dust, the hair. But at the same time, when working on a car like this, that's this old, you have to be careful. Um, you know, plastics and screws and and rivets, things. Uh, lose their strength over time and you can easily break something on your car or someone else's car so just be gentle and there you go i mean you can even use just inner clean on a rag to clean this little bit of fabric on the door i've got some dog hair here where'd my dog brush go hmm. so oh, there it is okay we got a little bit of dog hair on here just brush that off and a little dirt too Gonna help you clean it. Some lint over here. You can use a blade to push it off. And again, you can get the vacuum out again. And uh, let's get out the vacuum. And we'll use my little thing that I showed you. Take off the medium head. And now we're gonna go to my patent pending micro head. You like that. So we've removed uh, an adequate level of contamination and dirt from the interior of the car in the section that we're working on. So now we're getting to the point of uh, we've cleaned it. Now we have to protect it uh, and enhance it. So we're going to talk about dressings on the interior car. So we've chose today soap shine dressing, which is a water based dressing. Uh, here at Chemical Guys, we have two main categories when it comes to dressings. We have oil based and we have water based. Uh, if you live in an area that doesn't get a lot of moisture, a lot of rain, um, basically in southern LA where we live, we always use oil based because it lasts a little bit longer and we don't have to worry about it mixing with water. As you know, oil and water don't mix. So, um, you know, a lot of different choices. And then within those two categories, it comes into subcategories of your level of shine. We have things for like natural shine, which is a low subdued shine, or we have things that are very high and shiny. 
Uh, so again, you can those charts are online, and you can reference those when you pick out your dressings. Uh, dressings are important for a couple of reasons. They're important because they help clean and protect your car, uh, and they clean it by just safely removing contaminations off your plastics and your vinyl. And then it also protects your plastics because our dressings all have UVA and UVB inhibitors in them. And as you can see, the windshield right here, you get a lot of direct sunlight, uh, and that's going to help uh, stop this from deteriorating over long periods of time. Obviously, it's not in too bad a shape, um, so we're going to go ahead and use our silk shine. Get a new yellow microfiber towel. I like to spray it on the towel. It just helps. Um, this is an option. Now, another option is, uh, since we're talking about options today, is your interior brush. Uh, you can go ahead and use this. We've talked about this through a lot of our videos, is, is dedicating brushes for certain causes, whether it be exterior trims, tires, interior dressings, all those different things. So you can use uh, one of these brushes, dedicate it, cover it with your silk shine, and then all you have to do is just swab those areas. A uh, little bit more control over the situation, I use one microfiber towel and spray my silk, silk shine on, and then just wipe it. There you go, and that looks good. It does, I mean, you can see that high level of shine. It makes the door look good, I think. I mean, and that's personal preference. It really just makes it pop. Um, again, it's all on your level, your preference of how much shine you want in your car. I like shiny things. A lot of people in LA like shiny things. I think that's why traffic is as bad as it is. Uh, but you know, that's one choice. And again, we're talking about options. So we'll put that one down and we'll pick our inner clean back up since we're gonna go to the dash real quick. Now, if you're not looking for a shine at all, you can just clean with Interclean and it's gonna give you a nice matte finish. Uh, it's gonna give you, a, some people look for that factory subdued look uh, and feel. All of our products dry to the touch and they're not gonna leave a greasy or oily residue afterwards, but some people just like that, that matte muted finish. So uh, you don't even need to go any further. Interclean's gonna clean and protect and at the same time give you that nice matte finish. Uh, let's see, what other options do we have? You can also use a 2x4x6 microfiber applicator. These are really nice to spread anything over your car, whether interior, exterior, um, sealants, waxes, glazes, dressings, um, all those different things. Uh, and that's, uh, that's interior cleaning. Uh, did I forget anything? Like, did, did I cover it all? I think, I think, I think that's, uh, you know, for the last 15 minutes we've been sitting here, I think that covered everything pretty extensively. We're going to obviously go back and clean the rest of this interior uh, before we get ready for the delivery to the client. Uh, and that's going to include the rest of the dashboards. We might, uh, we're going to get in there. We'll, get, we'll show you some shots, removing the old dust and stuff like that. I'm sure you guys want to see it. So uh, we're going to do that. Now we're going to move to the exterior of the car. And as I said, we already put the black light on. I'll go over how to do it. We're only going to work in one section. I'm going to show you how to do uh, the, the glaze, the sealant, and then the wax. And then we're going to buff the whole car out. We're going to give you some final showing shots and, and let you know what all our work really uh, came to. So let's, uh, let's move outside. Okay, so here we are at the exterior of the vehicle. We've already applied our glaze, which is our black light glaze, to the entire exterior of the vehicle from top to bottom. And it's been setting in while we were doing some interior cleaning. Now it's time to buff off that, uh, that glaze and seal it in with our jet seal. Then we're gonna top it off to really make this, this black car pop with our black wax. So we've applied it using a two by four by six microfiber applicator. These are scratch free, soft. Uh, they just spread the material right over your surface. Uh, a glaze is going to help you fill in some of those uh, scratches and marring marks you weren't able to fix in paint correction and polishing. So that's going to fill that in. And then that jet seal on top of that's just really going to keep that protection on your car. So we've got it. We're going to use this area as our, uh, our test section so we can show you the three-step process. And then we're going to buff the whole car off, give it its, its sealant and its wax, and then we're going to show you the whole thing. So here we go. So we just, again, gently buff off that glaze. Circular motions are okay, but you want to apply zero to very little pressure. I mean, the microfiber towel is going to do the work for you, and it's just going to pick up that residual hazed up wax and glaze that's sitting on there. Now, sometimes as you're doing it, you can see uh, the purple from the black light's going to build up on the towel. That's the excess. That's okay. Not a big deal. But you just don't want to do it to a point where the towel becomes oversaturated. So if, if it doesn't seem to be working well, just flip the towel over, use a clean side. And you can continue to do that and just buff off those sections. Now, 
I'm buffing off the spoiler, and for those of you who are really paying attention, you're going to say, whoa, there's no way that's the same spoiler. And I told you in the uh, pilot episode that we were going to pop this right off, and we were going to see what we could do with a little uh, wet sanding and repainting. So I did pop this spoiler off. Um, so I wet sanded the spoiler, and I spray painted on the spray paint for about two or three days, let it sit in there, and then I put the clear coat on top. Then I used some V32 uh, and an orange pad, and I really just leveled it out, gave it a nice, a nice shine. I mean, it's not great. I think the total process cost me about 12 bucks, but from what it looked like before to what it looks like now, it's night and day. It's completely different. So we've removed the black light, um, and now we're gonna get, go ahead and put our sealant on, which is gonna seal in that black light, and it's gonna give you 12 months of protection from the sun, UVA and UVB rays. Uh, especially here in Southern California, it's brutal and uh, it's gonna beat your paint up very quick. So let me shake up our jet seal. And you're just gonna go ahead and apply some right to your applicator, just like that. And again, just gently work that out right into the surface of your car. I'm not gonna cross contaminate with the black light. Let me move this towel out of my way. And you just go ahead and evenly spread that jet seal over the surface of your vehicle. Get underneath the spoiler, get the other side from back here. And then I'm gonna go on ahead and put some on the spoiler as well. Now, again, why do we need a sealant? And let's talk about that. Because a couple episodes ago, when we were talking about paint meters and we were gauging paint, and I explained to you, when you polish a vehicle, especially one as old as this uh, Honda Civic DX 1996, 200,000 miles, the UVA and the UVB uh, inhibitors that's naturally in the paint, well not naturally, that comes from the factory, raise to the top of the clear coat, and then when we do po uh, polishing and paint correction, we're actually removing a majority of that protection. So we need to put our own protection back on the car so that the clear coat doesn't oxidize and doesn't fail, and the car doesn't become worthless. So that's why you want to put a good sealant on there. We have Jet Seal, which is a 12-month sealant. It's going to protect you up to a year. And then we also have our SS6, our Second Skin 6, which is going to give you up to two years of protection. So depending on the harsh elements that you live in, uh, you might want to consider which sealant you need. But let me tell you this, you absolutely need a sealant, no question about it. Everybody does. Whether it's a new car off the lot or a car that's 20 years old, everybody needs sealant. You can seal everything. You can seal your glass. You can seal your paint. You can seal uh, your, your rims, you can seal everything on your car to give it protection. So we've applied the jet seal. We're going to let this sit in for 20 minutes and then we're going to come back and we're going to buff it off just like we did with the black light. Then we're going to move to our black wax. I'm going to put a little bit more on here because it really needs it. <clears throat> we did some serious polishing on this back end. Just going to let that sit in for about 20 minutes. We're going to come back and polish it off and then we're going to put on our black wax. And again, remember, we're going to do this to the whole car. So uh, this is just a section to illustrate what we're doing. So I'll see you in 20 minutes. Okay, so that hazed right up. And again, little to no pressure, buff it off. Oh wow, that looks awesome. Jet Seal really brings it together. It's sealed in that, uh, the glaze underneath it and now it's giving you 12 months worth of protection and it looks great. I'm excited to put on the black wax because the black wax actually has black pigmentation in the wax that's going to enhance black and dark colored vehicles. I'm really excited actually to put that black wax on. We're actually going to send the client home with his own black wax so he can keep this car looking tip top. So let's put it on. Oh yeah, you can see that. Nice black. Okay, so we're going to use our disc applicator, our UFO applicator here. We're just gonna dip it right in, and then you just kinda wanna dab it on in a couple of locations, spread it out, and then straight lines, long straighter lines, I'm gonna need a little more than that, and just really push that out over the surface of the paint and let it work right in. And like everything else, you're gonna let this sit on there for about 20, 30 minutes, and then you're gonna buff off the residual. Put some on the spoiler here. Sorry, straight lines, straight lines. And there you go. You're just going to go ahead and let that sit in. So I'll see you in again, 20 minutes. Okay, so we gave it 20 minutes. Now we're gonna buff off the black wax. Clean, plush microfiber towel. Make sure you're using clean, plush microfiber towels. If you've washed them four or five times, they've gone through the cycle, you might not wanna use them to buff off wax. So again, just nice, light movements back and forth. 
Oh yeah. There it is. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you know what's next. I'm gonna make you wait a few more minutes. So we gotta just do our exterior trim pieces and then we're gonna show you the whole car, so hang out. All right, so the last two steps of this, prepping it before we give it to the client, is doing the trim on the exterior of the vehicle and the windows. Um, the windows, cleaning glass, spray on, wipe off, use a dry towel and buff off any residual chemicals. That's gonna give you a nice clean glass. As I said earlier, you can seal the glass, you can clay the glass, you can go as far as you want. Again, your definition of clean. But something that really stands out to me is restoring old plastic. Uh, I've seen it happen countless times now as I've been at CG. It's one of my favorite things to do is bring back that gray faded plastic. And here you have a perfect example of that. So how I do it and what Paul taught me and one of the best methods that I've seen so far for restoring old trim and, and plastics is using our orange degreaser. This is extremely strong degreaser. You can dilute it. You don't need to use it in its full strength. Uh, we diluted this one to one and we're gonna use it on this area. We sell professional grade cleaning chemicals, so that's why everything's so strong. <clears throat> so to remove, uh, to help uh, restore this, this faded plastic, we're going to just spray some degreaser on our orange HexLogic hand pad, and we're just going to gently, because again, it's an old car, we're just going to clean this plastic surface. It's going to take any contamination off there, and it's going to make it much more susceptible to the dressing which we're about to apply. So you want to give it a nice, a nice good scrub, clean it good, clean it well. And then, see, look at that. That is gross. I mean, I've put very little to no pressure on it, and that's everything that it took off. We're gonna put that down. We're gonna wipe it off. Again, more dirt coming off. And it's gonna, by removing that dirt from the pores of the plastic, it's gonna make it that, that much more susceptible to dressings that you're gonna put on it. It's an important step that a lot of people skip. I recommend that you do it if you're gonna restore old plastics. So there's the dirty side. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the towel over. That's why we fold it in quarters, so I have a clean side. And now, the big guns. If you want to restore old plastic, it's all about New Look Trim Gel. Um, this stuff, you can pretty much just drop it right onto your plastic and it's gonna just settle right in there and it's gonna give you a nice shine. You're gonna see a pretty dra dramatic difference pretty quick. So I'm gonna use the clean side of the microfiber towel and then I'm just gonna work that right into the plastics. And this works on all your plastics. This works on your tires, which we still have to do as well. Uh, it works on your plastic trim interior and exterior. And there you go, you can see that nice high level of shine that's coming back. Now there's a couple spots that look like they need a little bit more. And there you go, you just work that right in. And it's really gonna help restore the look and the finish of that plastic. Get down lower. New Look Trim Gel is definitely on the upper side of the shiny chart. So if you're looking for a nice glossy shine on the plastics of your vehicle, I would recommend New Look Trim Gel. Again, works on your tires, works on your trim and your plastics. You can use it for interior. Very versatile. And it makes things look great. So we're going to do the rest of the plastics. We're going to dress the tires, and then we're going to meet the client. So uh, sit tight, and let's finish this baby up. Okay, so the car's ready. The client's in the store waiting for pickup. Put a lot of work into this 1996 Honda Civic DX. Let's show them what we've done. Come on in. How you doing, Dylan? Doing good, Corey. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right, so we did a lot of work on your car. I mean, we started with a full inspection, went ahead and restored your headlights, then we uh, cleaned your car, we clayed your car, we polished your car, then we cleaned your interior, we cleaned your trims, we, we waxed it, we sealed it, put a lot of work into this car, and we're gonna send you home with some great things. So let's go ahead and go check it out. Cool. So we really put in a lot of elbow grease, trying to make it look as good as possible, and bang, there she is. Are you sure that's mine? <laughs> Yeah, we did a lot too. We did throw a little H on the front for you, uh -huh. but we have cleaned it up, we have shined it up, we've put everything that we've got into this car. So, like I said, we're gonna send you home with one of everything that we used. Every single chemical that we use to clean your car, you're gonna go home with one of those so you can take care of your car and keep it in tip top shape. Why don't you go check it out? I got something to say to the camera. Cool. If this is not enough for you, if this entire season doesn't cover everything you wanna know about auto detailing, come on down and take a class with us. We do weekend classes, we do full week master's classes. We have the Smart Detailing University right here in-house where we can teach you all the tips and tricks that you might not see in these videos. We gave you pretty much everything we got, but we did keep a few in our back pocket. So come down, take a class, and enjoy. We're gonna go make sure that Mr. Dillon likes his car.
I'm gonna close out. We have put a massive amount of work into this vehicle, a massive amount of time into this vehicle. We've used personnel. We've made you as many videos as we can make you. We answered your questions and we're gonna keep on doing it. So I'm gonna sign off now. This is Corey for Detail Garage. Have passion, be better. This is Detail Garage.